You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here for Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sunday Mountain Twitter the Gaming Dragon today. I'm coming back at us another Let's Play episode of Remember the Flowers. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. And we all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Looks to be a, looks to be a raccoon. Small one at that. He's carrying a clipboard under his arm and has a bag slung around his shoulder. I tried to lower my tension. If I need be, I could take him in a fight. There you are, Jasper. Sorry to make you come out on your day off. It's no big deal. I just wasn't expecting you to come back so soon. Thankfully, our new recruit has been rather cooperative. Isn't that right, Mr. Krager? I grunt and try to ignore them. You'll have to excuse him. He just woke up from a nap and is rather cranky, it seems. Aw, oh, don't worry, Mr. Krager. I'm the same way. His vo okay, his voice is high. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Krager. I'm the same way. His voice is rather high and mildly irritating my ears, mainly because he's trying to be so friendly to me. I glance toward the runt. He really expects me to answer. Artemis is smiling while his eyes remain cold before gesturing to his coat pocket. In an oance, I spit on the ground before turning to face them. I just want to get settled in. It's been a long trip. Don't you have a, didn't you have a dissection to attend, or some, attend to or something? Jasper tilts his head with a confused look on his face. Artemis actually laughs. What a morbid sense of humor. Again, please forgive him, Jasper. He's got a lot of learn he's got to learn to learn about the how we do things. Oh, absolutely. Here, let me get your car parked, sir, then I can assist you. You're too kind, Jasper. I am admittedly a tad worn out after driving for so long. It's no trouble at all. Seriously, it's one of the few times I get an excuse to drive after all. You do have a point. As you know, I'll take an excuse I'll take any excuse to avoid the porch just so I can go for a spin. Artemis hands over the keys to his car to the excitable raccoon. Take your time. I'll give Mr. Krager a small tour of the premises before we head inside. On it. Be back soon. I can't help but stare at Artemis. Either he's really he's a really good actor or he's being genuinely nice to this guy. After the raccoon drives away, I decide to speak up. Who the hell was that? Artemis turns his cold gaze at me once again. That is Jasper Sanders, my assistant. Adorable, isn't he? Just peachy. You'll see him from time to time when I'm out on business. He gestures me to follow him down one of the paths. While you were asleep, I got your credentials verified and approved. You'll be working under me for the time being. Cool. And now's as good a time as any is to let you in on something. Artemis turns to look at me with a very serious look on his face. I'm... I'm well aware that you know more than you should about our base of operations. When you're above the surface, you are not to mention anything incriminating to anyone, even to your fellow employees, unless told otherwise. If you were a bit less vague, I might have a clue as to what you're talking about. How stupid could one man possibly be? I just roll my eyes. I'm starting to get used to his petty attempts at trying to get under my skin. Artemis pulls out the remote to my collar. I tense up. I'm not a big... I'm not a big fan of repeating myself. If you don't listen to me, whatever happens is on you. An Arcadia collar can do more than just send electricity through your body. It records and transmits everything you say to the higher-ups. If they find out your lips are loose, they won't hesitate to kill you right then and there. They can tighten the collar to prevent you from talking, or send enough volts of electricity to fry your brain. It's even possible to detonate it no matter where you are on this planet. Artemis tucks the remote back into his pocket before he exhales. If you value your life, you'll learn to keep quiet. Why are you telling me all this? What's the catch? Artemis smirks as he pulls down the turtleneck he's wearing, showing his own Arcadia collar. What's the fun in it if I don't give if I don't give you a fighting chance? In the distance, we can see Jasper jogging to try to catch up with us. We can talk more candidly later on, just not now. Understand? I got it. I got it. Artemis smiles. Good. Hmm. So he's got his own collar. Interesting. Artemis gives me a tour of the main building. It reminds me a lot of Tinsia. It's like, you know, water time. Very pretentious and sterile. By the way, your roommate will be arriving today. Excuse me? My what? You're excused. You're fucking kidding me. Have I ever lied to you? Yes. Artemis sighs. 
Honestly, I thought you'd be more open to the idea. You should know that I work better alone. Well, it's a good thing you're not alone anymore, new recruit. My snout twitches in irritation. Don't worry, it's more of a front than anything. You're used to lying to others, yes? You'll be doing most of your, of your work down below. However, space has been rather scarce. Can I just sleep in a storage closet or something? I'm afraid not. As a new recruit, you need to familiarize yourself with the more mundane aspects of working here. Such as? For starters, you could remove that stick up your ass and learn to enjoy yourself. I can't imagine working here will be enjoyable in the slightest. You have a poor imagination. Use this as an excuse to broaden your horizons. Hm. Attaboy. And here are your new living arrangements. You're start out small, but if you produce satisfactory results, I could pull some strings for you to get better accommodations. Gee, thanks. I love adding more things to my ever-growing list of debts. I do too. We have so much in common. Here's your key card. Be sure not to lose it. You wouldn't want to add more to that list, after all. I snatch it and push past the weasel. Shut up. I take my rifle off my back and place it against the wall. It's only one room, but it's pretty big. The bunk beds are built into the wall to save space. The common area on the other side is circular, with a curved couch and coffee table. Across from our bunk beds is a serviceable kitchen. Everything is obnoxiously white. It's almost blinding. It smells too clean. If you want to cook anything, there's a tablet for you to order ingredients. A serviceman will personally deliver them to you. The showers on this floor are communal, but you'll have your own toilet past that door on the right. And don't worry, your collar doesn't care about getting wet. Artemis, scramble. Artemis rambles on without letting me get a word in. Eventually, I resort to interrupting him. Am I allowed to leave whenever I want? Oh, absolutely. You're not a prisoner. Just remember that, our, that the Arcadia Collar will track each and every step you take. It would be in your best interest to not wander too far without giving prior notice. Artemis flashes his stupid smile. I get it. I won't pull on my leash too much. See? You are learning. Artemis' axiom beeps. <laughs> he swipes through a few screens with a serious look on his face. Well, I was hoping to at least get a shower before getting back to work. Oh no, does that mean you're leaving already? I'm heartbroken. And don't you worry, I'll be back later tonight to give you your first mission. Jesus, already? Welcome to Resume, Lance Krager. We worked tirelessly to make the world a better place. Fantastic, better hurry before that call of yours zaps you or something. You really think they need to pull that with me? And like some people, I know my place, and I'm willing to do my job correctly. Then you should be a good example and get the fuck out. My, my, someone's impatient. You need some alone time. You can find some quality lotion in the water closet. Out! I growl. Artemis bows pretentiously. Of course, your highness. With that, the weasel makes his way out of my room. The door slides shut automatically. Out of frustration, I spit on the floor. and look around the room for any potential cameras. I wouldn't be surprised if they bug the place. Although, I guess there's not much point while I'm wearing this collar. My eyes immediately veer toward the bathroom. Where the fuck is that lotion? <laughs> what? Oh my god, really? The running water makes it difficult to hear. Before I got in, I tested how loud the door was with the shower on. I should be able to pick up pick up on if someone enters. I technically work here now, so I shouldn't be as tense as I am. It's like, you know, water time. How are we going to get to see Lance's penis? <laughs> well, we already have seen that before. Still, we never know what these freaks would, would stoop to. It's been a while since I've had a decent shower. I decided that if I can't do anything outwardly rebellious, I'll at least take advantage of their amenities when I can. Despite being communal, each of the showers have their own separate stall and locking door. I made sure no one else was in there. I needed some time alone. I take the opportunity to get myself as good of a rinse as I can. I'll need to get my own shampoo. None of the ones in here particularly appeal to me. I guess the job done, I guess. I've heard, the, I've heard the door open twice so far, making me freeze each time. Both times it was just them taking a piss, washing their paws and leaving. The stall is still locked, but I can't be too careful. Hmm. I feel like I'm on an infiltration mission again. Doubt anyone's made it this far, though. Lucky me. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm way too tense right now. I had the bottle of lotion Artemis teased me about. The thought of doing something that he suggested makes me bite my lip. Huh, <sighs> ay ay ay. With a grunt, I lean down to pick it up and at least smell it. it smells like vanilla. Hm. I'm really fucking pent up, but I don't need his advice. I've been fine up until now that it's fancy bullshit and it'll just rinse off anyway. I'll save it for when I'm done in here. 
I set the bottle back down and realized I've gotten hard thinking about how to blow off some of this stress. I sighed before getting down to business. I spent longer than normal in the bathroom. My accent hasn't made any noises, so I guess I'm not needed quite yet. On my way back to my room, I pass by a few people who look at me curiously before they whisper to each other. It takes effort not to growl at them for staring. I just scoff and try to ignore them. It's awkward walking around the halls in just towels. I'll need to make it a habit of sh to shower late at night. While carrying on my clothes, I rummage through my pants pocket for the keycard Artemis gave me. Oh. The second the door slides open, I met with yet another person I've never seen before. He's crouched down and has his back to the door like he's inspecting the room. His ears perk to my direction at the sound of the door opening. Oh, hello there. Ah, oh, fuck, don't tell me. You must be Lance Krager. It's nice to meet you. I groan. Yeah, that's me. I assume you're my roommate, then. That I am. He gets up to greet me enthusiastically. I thought he, thought he might be a wolf at first, but upon closer inspection, I'd say he's a Shibu, a Shiba Inu. The fur pattern checks out. Never seen a blue one, though. Looks like we're about the same height, but he's definitely wider than I am. The name's Benjamin. Benjamin Amos. Though most people just call me Benji. And it's nice to meet you. You already said that. Look, I'm kind of... Without even hesitating, Benjamin gives me a bear hug. My instincts go into overdrive. My arms are free from the sudden embrace. I prepare to use them. I hope we can get along well. This is only my first day, but if you need anything, let me know. Get off me! I roar at this man in his sudden intrusiveness. He startled and loosens his grasp, giving me a chance to slip away. With a swift movement, I knee him in the gut. While he's about to fall to his knees, I grab him aggressively by the arm and whip him around until he's in a chokehold. If you want to see the end of next week, you're going to stay as far away from me as you can. I have no interest in getting close to you or anyone who works here. Not if you understand. Don't speak. I can feel both of our heartbeats. Mine is fast but stable. His is completely erratic. He meekly nods. He's shaking. After a moment, I can smell the fresh scent of blood coming from somewhere, and I snap back to my senses. I spot bright red liquid running down his arm as he's struggling to escape. Fuck! Fuck! So much for being discreet. It hasn't even been a day, and I'm being reckless. He could easily report me, and I can only imagine how well that'd go. I don't have time to be pulling stunts like this. I have to figure out how to get this collar off me and get out of here. I need to rein myself in and think things through carefully. One second, y'all. Water time. As I am now, I have little to no autonomy. I forget that I'm stuck in this shitty game Artemis set me up in. I click my tongue. At this rate, I can already tell I'm going to die working for these assholes. I loosen my grip on his neck and let go. The Sheba drops to his knees, catches his breath, and scampers a few feet away from me. Taking a closer look, I can see just how much blood is dripping onto the floor. If this guy really wanted to harm me, he could have done so. As he is now, he just looks like a harmless dog fearing for his life. The slash marks on his arm begin staining a deeper red with the more blood spills out. Okay, I need you to stand up. Can you do that? He weakly nods. Good. Here, let me help you. Upon looking at my paw, I see I scraped some of his fur off his arm as well. I don't think he's in a lot of pain, but he's definitely scared. Oh, damn. S sorry about that. I, uh, I'm sorry. His ears are laid back, and he's avoiding looking at me. I can't believe how much of a fuck-up I am. Angry at myself, I shake my head. Look, you don't need to apologize. If anything, I should be the one saying sorry. Let me take a look at your arm. He nods before turning back to me. I think there's a first aid kit in here somewhere. Hang on. Okay. I'm just improvising in an attempt to defuse the situation I forced upon myself. It's a goddamn hospital. It makes sense for them to have those lying around, right? I exhale in relief as I find one in a cabinet. Alright, now hold still. I'll clean it and wrap it up. Benjamin doesn't say anything as I patch him up. I have enough experience with external injuries like this. Perks of trying to survive as a mercenary. It doesn't take me very long to finish. That should be good. Thank you. He's still shaking. Okay, look, I'm really, really sorry about earlier. It's been a while since I felt this guilty over something. He came at me so fast I didn't have time to register what was going on. I panicked and I lashed out. It's not an excuse, but I am sorry. Benjamin turns his head to look at me, still hanging it low. I, uh, it wouldn't have happened if I didn't surprise you like that. Again, it's not your fault. You didn't, do you know anything about me? No, nothing. Then I'll tell you a little. I've been a mercenary, a mercenary for the better part of a decade. In order to survive, I had to develop certain instincts. It's still not an excuse, but I thought you should know that I don't take surprises well. If you need to, you can report me or whatever. Maybe they'll transfer me to another facility or something. Oh, no, don't worry. I mean, you did kind of scare me. 
But hearing your explanation, I can see how a surprise bear hug could spook you. Benjamin knocks on his head. My wife always said I'd jump without thinking. I should have asked you before doing that. Hell, you were completely naked. <laughs> Which, uh, speaking of... Now that the situation has calmed down, Benjamin covers his eyes with his paws. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!